Well, as an extension specialist, uh, planning for me often is, is a difficult sell to clients or even when I'm working with some of our own university farms. Um, the immediate benefit is, is not noted. But when you need it, uh, a good plan, uh, plan of action becomes invaluable. And really the overall purpose of, of this is to reduce risk and liability and help return the agricultural operation to, to business or, or operating as quickly as possible after an accident or you know, a weather situation, whatever the emergency may be. Now, while it's important uh, for an agricultural uh, entity, and a farm, a ranch, a feeding operation, to have a variety of emergency plans, the focus of today's um, presentations will be, you know, manure focused and, and AFO CAFO related, though I think we all recognize that agriculture is always ranked in the top four most dangerous occupations with commercial fishing, forestry, and uh, mining. So what is an emergency action plan? Well, it should be basic but thorough, relying on common sense that will help you guide uh, good decision making during an emergency. Uh, this would go the same for uh, helping your employees, your managers, whoever is, is on farm and, and making decisions when an emergency may occur. Uh, for the sake of you know, manure spills and environmental emergencies, we want to plan specifically for uh, the type of system on that operation, the type of management in place, and that environment. So this means paying attention to is it a liquid waste management system? If there is a breach of a system, where is that liquid going to go? What are the stopgap measures? Now, probably the most important part of planning is actually prevention, not having an accident take place uh, in the first place. So this ties into some other you know, management practices we have with animal feeding operations, and it's very important to remember your self-inspections, your record keeping. Uh, if you have a permit, a, of a, an NPDES style permit or even a state permit, more than likely you're inspecting manure storage structures, and this sort of uh, understanding of the, the integrity of that structure goes a long way towards prevention. Now, emergency planning, as I sort of alluded to, it's not just a good idea, it's also a requirement when you're in those permitted situations. Uh, an NPDES permit or a state uh, delegated state authority for an NPDES type permit, they're going to require an emergency plan uh, for the AFO, CAFO area. Uh, the state permitted operations may be at a, a smaller threshold, smaller medium AFOs, once again, very likely to require an emergency plan. And finally, these are components of NRCS CNMPs. So once again, um, it's a good idea, but it's also part of required programs such as permitting or, or cost share. Now, what are the six basic steps? Well, first and foremost, uh, dealing with a manure emergency is to eliminate the source. Second is to contain the spill if possible. The third is to assess the extent of the spill and note any obvious damages. The image that we have here on our screen shows uh, a temporary uh, containment of a spill. Uh, we see a berm on the left, someone out there with the track steer loader uh, pushing some earth around to, to manage that, to contain that situation so it can be properly managed. Number four, contact the appropriate agencies. Uh, we'll discuss this more later, but that could be from an immediate contact uh, to 24 hours. Clean up the spill and start to make repairs. And then most likely you're going to need to prepare and submit a summary report. This may vary uh, by state, but usually this is seven to 14 days, five to 10 business days, that sort of scenario uh, to prepare a summary report and to the appropriate agency. Some other basic tips, um, a phone tree and resource list. This is quite important. Um, you need to have this resource available uh, on the operation. Since we've moved away uh, with telephone technology, cell phones, walkie-talkies, we don't really have as many land-based phones on agricultural operations. So these phone lists need to be in tractors near where records are kept, uh, and the cabs of farm vehicles, so they're accessible to everyone. And they should include top management and personnel. 
the numbers of services uh, and equipment dealers, uh, equipment um, contractors, you know, someone you may want to call to get in extra equipment to deal with the spill, appropriate neighbors, that may be important to gain access to their land if that's the best opportunity to, say, head off a spill, uh, as well as to alert them of a situation which may impact uh, their livelihood as well. Technical assistance providers, uh, your reporting agencies, local government contacts, water utilities, there could be a variety of on that phone tree and resource list. Annual review and training. So I highly recommend that the emergency action plan be looked at and uh, updated on an annual basis. And I think the best opportunity is to have that coincide with your annual CAFO report. Now this applies to those that are permitted and, and doing their annual report, but tying uh, the review of the emergency plan to some annual uh, event in the business or in record keeping uh, will be helpful. Recheck and verify those emergency contacts from the phone tree and resource list. Train, retrain uh, employees, farm family, new employees, um, maybe retrain somebody that might have been involved in an emergency or accident. And then uh, update and verify and, and get that phone tree and, and locations of the plans uh, back out around the operation where they need to be. I had briefly mentioned appropriate reporting. Uh, this is going to vary um, a little bit from, from state to state and depending who the appropriate authorities are. But basically, um, there's two types of reporting. The immediate, as I described, is 0 to 24 hours and the follow-up report, that's going to be 7 to 14 days. Now, the, uh, these are most likely made to um, the permit authority for animal feeding operations, but it could also be another state environmental agency. And then finally, there's also a need to report locally, it could be the local health department, local water utility, uh, or other. Now, this should be spelled out for permitted operations uh, somewhere in their permit paperwork or um, letter of coverage from their appropriate agency. So with that, that is the quick introduction to today's topic, and I'm going to hand it over to Kevin Erb from Wisconsin.